Afternoon folks, hope you're doing very, very, very well. I'm going to do one of my own hobby nightmare stories today, what's really a Staff of Games Workshop nightmare story <laughs> rather than anything else. But thank you for liking the video and subscribe to the channel and all that sort of stuff. If you like what I do, the Patreon is down below and also, you know, there, you can become a member of the channel. Up to you. All good. You do you. Um... Also, the Discord is free. I keep, uh, every single time we get a surge of subscribers, I keep getting messages of, you know, do I need to be a Patreon to subscribe to the Discord? No, you don't. It's free. So come and speak to us. And, you know, if you need some help, we're all there to help you. Just come and have a chat with us. The advice and venting section of the Discord is where you need to go for that kind of thing. I always overlook it. There's some really interesting discussions going on in, in there. And uh, I've had many bad days, you know, where I've sat down at a cafe somewhere and I've got my phone out and I've scrolled through and I've gone to the advice and venting section of the Discord, the Northern Exile Discord, and it just makes me feel better. I don't even say anything. I just read what problems people are going through and it really does help to put your, your own problems into perspective, you know what I mean? But anyway, speaking of problems, let's get into my own hobby nightmare story because it's not going to be a very long one because these ones never are because I'm only telling one story and it's mine. I got a comment last time about uh, context saying, well, you know, the point of your story was at the end of the story, you know, of a 15-minute story. And I said, yeah, well, the context is needed. You know, I'd like you to be able to know what the, the surrounding, you know, methods of, of what's going on, you know, in the store, so you get better context of what the story is about. So, essentially, today we're talking about when I got into trouble for using uh, the Emperor has a text-to-speech device on official Games Workshop channels. Now, for those of you who don't know, there is a YouTuber called Brother Alpha Busa. I uh, highly recommend this stuff. I will put the link to the video that I actually used down in the description below. And he does uh, Games Workshop lore skit videos, essentially. Uh, a, a running theme, running story about what if the Emperor of Mankind had a sexy speech device installed in his throne. And he is the most grou grouchy, dad-like uber chad you've ever seen in your entire life. And it's hilarious, and it's, it's brilliant, and it brought so many people into the hobby that it's, it's kind of ridiculous. So, it, at the time I was at Games Workshop, it was really uh, taking off in popularity, that show. Uh, until it was canned by Games Workshop later on. But anyway, it's a bit of context for what we're, what we're going to be running through here. So, I was running my own store, okay, in England, my own Games Workshop store. And I noticed that some numbers in the store were going down, mainly money, you know. Mainly due to the lowering of foot traffic. And that was mostly because hobby stores were opening up nearby, like close to my own Games Workshop store. These weren't branded Games Workshop stores. These were what we call trade accounts. So the fun fact is that Games Workshop do allow trade accounts to sell Games Workshop stock at over 20% off a few hundred yards away from my one-man store, where I could only sell things at full price. The frustration was rather real, right? Because these trade accounts, they, they will literally come in and they will undercut you by as much as like above 20-20%. Normally you're only supposed to sell 20% below RRP, recommended retail price, but there are multiple stores in my area that did far, far more than that. Some of them were even like 50% off, things like that, just to get people through the door. And I had quite a good relationship with most of the guys in my area who run trade account stores. As a, 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 basically anywhere that sells Games Workshop products that isn't a Games Workshop store is a trade account. That's, a, that's what they're, that's what they're de defined as by Games Workshop. Some managers, Games Workshop managers, um, hate these guys. Like they're just like, yeah, they, they just come in, they suck away all my customers because they, they have cheaper models. And one big frustration from Games Workshop managers is we do all the work into recruiting people into the hobby. And when it comes time for little Timmy to get his £500 worth of Games Workshop stuff at Christmas, his mum, who doesn't know any better, will go to this trade 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 account store rather than coming to the guy who, who their kid knows, you know, and, and, and who the kid trusts to get them the, the right stuff. Um, and that happened all the time. But Games Workshop gen genuinely don't give a shit. As long as they're getting money for their products, they, they don't give a shit where it's from. But of course, it is your fault. It's your fault if your money's going down. They open the trade account next door to you, but, you know, screw you if your money goes down because, you know, that's your fault. Anyway, in response, I wanted to make my store less GW, more hobbyist. 
mainly because I was pissed off with them at this point because because they, they weren't listening to me. Like I'd, I'd said for a long time, please don't open up any of these trade accounts. Don't let them open up right next to my store, you know. And they would just go ahead and do it anyway. They would just go ahead and have them come in. They, they, would, they would just... It was just getting to the point where, you know, they weren't helping me. So I decided to help myself, essentially. So I decided to make my store less GW and more hobbyist. And what did I mean by that? I, I wrote down a, a new business plan for my store. I cut down on the corporate speak. And so no longer would I do the corporate spiel whenever somebody came in. And the ultra pro, pro GW stance was gone and things like that. So if they did something scummy, I, I would let people know that wasn't happy. And I was on their side. You know, I just would do that. If a customer came in and wanted to, to spend £150 on something, the normal GW way is to upsell them. So if they're coming in to spend £150, get them to spend £200, you know, £250. By getting them excited about the hobby. But if I noticed they were spending £150 on something that would give them limited returns, thanks to how shocking GW's pricing was, I would point them in the right direction instead of just getting the sale. You know, even if it meant making less money in that one sale. My motto when people asked about this behavior was, well, I would rather have you come back and spend £50 each time in my store because you trust me, rather than having you spend £150 now, be disappointed and walk away from the store or even the hobby itself. Right? That was my motto, essentially, in the store. Essentially, it's about building up trust. It's about making sure that the customer knows that what I'm saying isn't to upsell them and isn't to try and get more money out of them. What I'm saying is to make sure that they're getting the best out of their money in the hobby, essentially. So, another thing I did was I started playing my own music in the store. It was non-swearing, it was all above board. But it was generally excellent 80s metal tunes that were pretty upbeat, you know. I gave, I gave, a, uh, I gave over one of the painting tables to allow for bigger games in the store. Usually we are only allowed to run 1,000 point games in the stores, but I decided to do 2,000 point games on a Thursday night, calling it 2K Thursday, and even started a small league for Thursday night. I never played in those games because it was just too busy, because um, it was working. We were getting a lot of people into the store and I was making sales, you know, I was just making, making good money. Another fun fact, uh, when I used to, to post uh, the league table on our WhatsApp group, uh, and a dude called Dean, which is my name as well, uh, was a Raven Guard player. He was sat top of the league table, so he was doing quite well. He's an ex, ex Navy guy, by the way, really nice guy. He actually is in a Discord too, so hello to you. Uh, the higher ups thought this was me, and actually gave me a warning. I eventually got I got the actual dean to email them and call them, saying it was him and not me, and they accepted that. But they kept the warning on file. I had no idea who snitched to this day, but I refused to stop the league. I just kept it on the down low from here on in, you know. So this guy's winning the league. They thought it was me. They thought I was the one at the top of this leaderboard. And I was like, no, 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 I don't play Raven Guard. I'm not a coward. I stand I stand in the light. I, I let you come to me in Brain Lake. Thank you very much. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so, so Dean got in touch with them and said, no, it, it was me. You know, it, it, it's it's not the manager. It was me. I, I'm the Raven Guard player. Here's a picture of my Raven Guard models and me, you know, like it's not him. And, but the, the, the warning stayed on file. I had no idea why, but just that's what it was. So, money in the store starts to turn around. We get a dedicated following in the store as we offer the same thing they get at, at other hobby stores, but it's super chill, laid back, and there is only Warhammer, so there's less magic weebs to put up with. So there's less people playing, you know, Digimon or whatever, who perhaps aren't bringing the best atmosphere to the store. They can come in and, and be with a load of other veterans and new new guys coming into the hobby. Um, we, we get an older clientele. And let me tell you, those veterans really drop the cash if they like you. Like, if you... What I was told when I started King's Workshop, you know, don't cultivate a veteran mentality in your store because they will suck up your time and not give you anything back. That is a complete fabrication. If you ever become a King's Workshop manager... Uh, you can tell the guys who are going to give you money by just the way that they are with you. You know, these are upstanding guys, they've got good jobs. And if they like you, they will go out of their way to make purchases at your store to keep you afloat, to keep you in the black every single week. You're in growth every single day of every single week. That's what they do. You know what I mean? They, they are very much like that. So, and the really good ones, they would go out of their way to nurture a new hobbyist too. 
So they would go out their way to try and teach other people a hobby and bring them in. So we, it was exponential growth in the store. Week by week by week by week, it got, it, it's like a snowball, just kept going and going and going until I eventually I started getting exhausted and I started breaking down after a few months because I was rushed off my feet. I didn't know I had too much to do. There was too many people in the store. I was selling pretty much all day. I was knackered essentially, you know. Uh, one day, I decided to post an update on the Facebook channel of the store about our new codex Necrons that was coming out that I was ex that was extremely strong out of the box in one or two combinations from the book. I was shown by guys who'd gotten leaks um, who came into the store who were big Necron players how they were really excited for this new book and how it was going to be really really powerful and eventually uh, Games Workshop themselves started releasing tidbits from the book that showed how powerful certain combinations in the new Necron book were going to be in 8th edition. And the Necron book in itself wasn't very good, but these specific combinations were extremely good. I used to do this all the time, as people got a real kick out of an actual GW Facebook account engaging in banter with hobbyists, you know. Uh, I posted a text-to-speech device clip of Necrons laughing condescendingly above the new codex. I got a load of laughs and four pre-orders, which is pretty huge. And those pre-orders from Necron stuff were actual Necron armies too. So it was the new codex and loads of Necron army bits because people started Necron armies because they thought it was hilarious. A day or two later, uh, someone from HQ turns up to my store, which I hate at the best of times as I'm making money, but I don't want them sniffing around and getting in customers' faces. They tend to just stand there and judge people, silently making notes. It, it just turns people off. People don't want to come back to the store when there's a Games Workshop guy there snootily looking down his nose at people who are coming in. This guy, though, he's actually all right. Uh, he comes in and sits me down and explains, I can't use the text-to-speech device footage because, and get this, we don't own the copyright as it's transformative and Brother Alpha Busa, the guy who makes the videos, could ask us for money for using his stuff in our advertisements. How ridiculous is that? That, and he said, GW just don't advertise. Just tell people it's there and leave it at that. I was so confused as Alpha Busa uses our art to make his content. He wouldn't dare come to us for money or anything like that. Regardless, I was told to take the video down or get my second warning strike. Second, I say, visibly shocked and a bit annoyed. And the trainer says, you know, I've been competing in an, Ill in an illegal competition in store. I tell him once again the score how Dean, the other Dean, is a Raven Guard player, and just, uh, thankfully, as I'm saying that, the real Dean walks in, Raven Guard battle case and all. I call him over, and he explains once again the situation. The trainer is a nice guy and thanks him, and asks to talk to me in the back. When we get there, he tells me the trainers know I'm not playing games in the store, because it was explained, and even if I was, it shouldn't really matter. It's driving sales, and that's what counts. He says the fact I'm doing an event aimed at veterans is the reason the warning stuck on the system beside my name. In short, it's politics. The right people at GWHQ don't think you're a good fit for GW. This was one of, one of about six instances where I realised I would not be retiring at Games Workshop. Pretty shitty times, you know. I didn't, didn't feel great at the time. Still doesn't now. These aren't good memories to go sifting through, to be honest with you. Because, you know generally gets me down when I think about how much I was looking forward to working there and how um, absolutely over the moon I was to get the job and to be moving up in the company. Games Workshop is the first company to ever really put their faith in me and actually, you know, um, believe in me and say, hey, here's some responsibility. And I took that to heart and ran with it. And the fact that things like this started, you know, mulching into my enjoyment of it to eventually when I, I put down the hobby <clears throat> the reason why I didn't start this channel for a long time was because I, I put down the hobby when I when I did my original video on this channel called games Work, working at games workshop my experience it was the first video to really take off and I wasn't monetized at the time which is a shame because it would have made me a lot of money because it's got like 100k views on it now but um I made that and then walked away from the hobby yeah I was done I, I was absolutely done and the way that the, the, the YouTube channel has gone, which I really like, is that I walked away and I did my own thing. I did, I did, I did writing videos, I did role-playing videos, I did all sorts of these, I did let's play videos, just to, just to have fun myself. 
because I wasn't back into the hobby and I wasn't ever going to be back into the hobby. But th but when I started to get back into it when I was in America, you know, it started to pick up steam and I thought, well, I should I should really do one or two hobby videos on my channel. I did my first hobby video back on the channel whilst I was still in America after things had all fallen apart over there. And then when I got back, I really threw myself into it and the channel's grown since then. Uh, but for the longest time, I didn't even want to do the hobby. And this is one of the reasons why. Imagine getting this every week. You know, there's a new thing every week where they're coming after you for something else now. That, you know, some perceived slight that you've given. Some, some perceived thing that you've done that's really annoying them. Because they want you to quit. They want you to leave. They don't want you managing that store anymore. And they can't just sack you, you know? Um, so... That is my hobby horror story for today. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and do all that fun stuff. The Patreon's right there. If you want to help out, go for it. Um, we are somewhere, nowhere near our £750 a month target, but we are we are climbing day in, day out. You know, we're getting there. And uh, you, you all mean a hell of a lot to me if, you, if you're if helping out with the channel. And also, we, are, we will be doing a uh, full-on prize draw later on this month 52 two, uh, sorry two chances to win 50 pounds worth of games workshop models or any models that you want it will be later on this month <clears throat> i will be doing if you're signing up for the patreon i will be doing the uh, upcoming a member of the channel i'll be doing the thank you flash screen later on this week so make sure you get your names in for that love you all a long time have a really good day and i'll speak to you tomorrow for more hobby nightmares see you then